Hello, everyone. It's Mike Thomas here with your market update for Florida. So you're thinking about real estate here in Florida, thinking whether you should buy, not buy, um, want to see some numbers. Great. Here we are. We're going to go through all the numbers for you. Right now, I'm currently in the uh, state of Florida. We just got the new update for May. Got in all the numbers. Closed sales, 26,000. April was 23,000, 26,000, 18,000. So the numbers are pretty high right now. Uh, year to date, we are at the highest number of closed sales uh, for the year in single family homes right now. And we're going back uh, quite a bit here. So let's take a look at the graph. Uh, what I've got up here is in June, 2021, uh, the number of closed sales were 34,000. And here we are, 26,000. So not that far off the highest point. But what I want to see is home prices. I want to see what is the medium sales price. And here it is, medium sales price. The medium sales price is what most the uh, homes are selling for. And we're going to apply that. And we're going to take a look at some numbers here. So here in the state of Florida, the highest amount of medium the highest medium sales price was four hundred and twenty thousand dollars in may and june of last year which is at the tip of the the market so we had a correction right here we went down to three hundred and eighty nine thousand or three hundred and ninety thousand to round it off and now we're right back up to four hundred and about twenty thousand dollars right now what does that mean well, uh, that means that in Florida, where we were at the highest possible price, uh, medium sales price of 420,000, the market is now back to where it was before uh, this time last year. So this is about one year right here, came down. If you didn't buy yet, um, you know, maybe you should have, I don't know. But let's take a look at county and county, and let's take a look at townhouses. Let's see what they were looking at. Um, medium sales prices for townhouses. Uh, here we are at the highest point, about 325000 It slipped down to three hundred five, and then gradually started to go back up again. Um, what does that mean about investing in Florida? I think it's a great time to invest in Florida. Um, market values just keep going up here just because we live in a subtropical climate with the Bahamas and um, it's a great place to live. Uh, it's really nice. It's beautiful. Uh, palm trees and everything else. So we have a very, very nice, um, we live in paradise. And if you want to live in paradise, Florida is the place you should buy. Let's take a look at some of the um, other major metropolitan areas around. Let's take a look at Cape Coral, Fort Myers area. What does that look like? And we'll buy that for single family homes. And we are looking at about the same thing here. We were up at the highest point around May, June last year. It dropped. There's the big old drop in July. Started to drop a little bit more in November. And right back up again, 445,000. So between 469 and 440,000 or 445,000, the Fort Myers Cape Coral area um, is doing quite well. If you're looking at townhouses and condominiums, let's take a look at that market for the same area. And here we are, June 2022, last year was at the highest point. And now it's still at the highest point. It's at 350. So uh, right back where we were last year, about this time. Let's take a look at some other areas as well. Let's take a look at uh, uh, Crestview, Fort Walton Beach, Destin area. Let's take a look at how that is. Let's uh, look at single family homes first. Let's see where they are. So right now, we here in May, the highest peak at 443,000. It dropped, it bounced down, 
Shoulda bought in January, shoulda, coulda, woulda, and we're back up to 441,000 from the peak. So we're right back where we were about summertime of last year in that single family home market. Let's take a look at townhouses and condominiums. Let's see what they did. And um, we are looking about, oops, this is a big old slide. So in March, well, actually, let's take a look at the highest point. June was right there, 615. It dropped. But if you know anything about this market, um, it's a lot of college towns. And normally after season time, the market does drop. This is a huge drop. So this may be a great place to buy and invest in a townhouse or condominium right now. So if you're looking in this area, uh, the Fort Walton Beach, Crestview, Destin area might be a good place to look at and see what's going on there. Let's take a look at uh, Dalton, Daytona, Ordman Beach area. Let's see what's going on there. And right here again, we're peaking at the top last year, uh, summer. 360,000, it dropped down to 340 ish and is back up to 355. So that's where this area right here, the Daytona, the greater Daytona area is at right now, includes Palm Coast, of course. Um, and this is a great place to actually be. There's a lot of deals to be uh, had there. It is still a place which I consider to be very undervalued for the location because you're very close to Orlando, Kissimmee, Walt Disney area, and you're right there on the beach, uh, including Melbourne Beach, which is on the top of my list of favorite places to go. Let's take a look at the townhouse and condominiums. So last year, about October, uh, was at the highest price. 347 was the medium sales price, and then whoop, dropped dramatically. Wow. Uh, had bought in November of 2022, would have done very well. Oops. There goes my microphone. And now we are back up and back down, kind of a market. It's not really sure where it's going, but townhouses and condominiums normally do that. And so I think it's going to go back up again. I think it's going to go in this direction, but we won't know until the numbers are in. So that's Daytona Beach. Let's take a look at the Gainesville area, Central Florida. And the home prices, wow. Last year this time, we were peaking at 370, and right now we're at 365 right back where we were last year. So it looks like the market did drop. And if you were fortunate enough to buy um, around the beginning of this year, you are probably doing quite well. Let's take a look at the townhouses and condominium market. Can I click on that? Hopefully, yes. Townhouses and condominium market. And we are, we are right now at the highest possible price, one ninety nine. Uh, last year, about this time, we were at one eighty one, and it is still going up. So the Gainesville area is continually going, probably because of the University of Central Florida. Um, or the University of Florida. It is a great, great place to uh, invest. Let's take a look at Jacksonville area. Let's take a look at single family homes first. Let's see what we've got there. Again, I'm seeing this all over statewide and regional wise. I'm seeing 405, it drops around January, February and right back up to almost $400,000 again for single family homes. Let's take a look at the condominium area. 
and same thing. Last year, this area hasn't even been affected at all because you're at $290,000 for the Jacksonville area townhouses and condominiums, um, which is an increase. It did not dip much, but again, January, February <coughs> was kind of the time to buy. Nevertheless, I think that real estate is going to continue to go up here in Florida. And let's take a look at Miami, Fort Lauderdale area, my neck of the woods, single family homes. Let's hit the ply. Let's see where we are here. Wow. So last year, about this time, we were peaking at the market. Everything was going crazy, selling for $600,000, medium sales price in the Tri-County, Miami, Broward, West Palm Beach area, Fort Lauderdale. And now dropped in December and way back up again, 610, which is the highest record price. So when people are saying that they're going to wait until the market is going to, the prices are going to come down, they may be waiting an awful long time for that to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I think we've had a correction. That correction has happened. Um, and it was down at the bottom around December, January of this year. It recovered quite quickly, though, which is surprising to me. Normally, it takes about a year, year and a half um, to recover. And we recovered in about six months. Uh, I guess it's the demand for real estate. So let's take a look at the Naples, uh, St. Marco area here. Um, let's see how that went. Oops, let me go back to Miami real quick because I didn't look at the townhouses and condominiums, uh, the Southeast Florida area. And here we are, condos. We were peaking at the highest price in June of last year, uh, which is what we call the medium sales price because we take out the highs and the lows and we look at what most like 90% of the, the properties are selling for because if you have one property that's super low or one property that's super high it just throws off the numbers the average numbers so we look at medium sales prices and because of that we're right back where we were this time last year for townhouses and condominiums uh let's see just let's go back to naples and let's take a look at single family homes and we have a little turn down right here. But look at how high these prices are. So we went from a medium sales price. Last year, everybody was going crazy and nuts about this time in April, May, buying, 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 buying. Uh, multiple offer situation. Here we are in November, about the same price. We jumped up in April and we slid down. And it's probably because... A lot of people have been, um, it's a very seasonal area. And when people go back north, um, sales tend to drop a little bit. And here we have the same, same thing. There is a slight drop, but I think it's just because people went back up north and most of the selling happens during uh, January, February, March, and April during the seasonal months. So this is the Naples area right now. Very beautiful area. If you've never been to Naples, you should go and uh, take it and visit. Northport, Sarasota, Brandon area. Let's take a look at that. We'll take a look at single family housing first. And I'm giving you a statewide report of everything that there is to know about real estate here and we are at the top of the market at 500 and almost 45,000. Here we are at 540. We slipped down a little bit to 513, but it is a seasonal area as well. In fact, a lot of areas here in Florida are very seasonal. If you look at the condominium market, here was the peak last year, June, uh, May, June area. And it did drop down in November. But whoosh, right back up again. So we are looking at 
where we were this time last year, as far as medium sale price of homes go. If we took a look at the condominium market and townhouses, let's take a look at that. Am I looking at the same thing? Yeah, we did. We already saw this peaking here, peaking here. So let's take a look at the Orlando Kissimmee area. Very, very popular for international buyers. And let's take a look at seeing what that's going on. Here we go. The height of the market was around May, June, started to drop down. But Disney is keeping that area quite alive. Uh, no major drops. There was a slight drop from November to December. But other than that, it is pretty flat for single family homes. Let's take a look at the townhouses and condominiums, which a lot of investors buy. So the people that come down here for season time don't normally buy houses, houses, so to speak. Uh, they normally buy townhouses and condominiums. And here we are in May, June, which was the highest price. And it just keeps going up and up and up. So that mouse over there in Disney is sure keeping Orlando's real estate alive and well. Um, let's take a look at the Palm Bay, Melbourne area. One of my favorite areas. I like this area because it is where all the people from Orlando go to the beach. Uh, Cape Canaveral, which is Kennedy Space Center, is there. And we have peaking in July last year, dropping down, and pretty steady and right back up again. Pretty much where we were last year uh, for that area in single-family homes. Let's take a look at how the townhouses and condominium market went there. And... There was a huge drop here in May, but that's to be expected when all the people leave for season time. Uh, it makes uh, brings down the number somewhat. So I would venture to take a look for the next uh, month or so to see in what direction it would go. My prediction is it will probably start going back up again. But this is the Melbourne area, uh, Palm Bay, Titusville area. And we are looking at Cape Canaveral area. Let's take a look at Palm City. And let's take a look at Palm City with single family homes first. And what do we have here? Uh, the peak was actually right around here, but that area, Palm City didn't really peak until August, September. It dropped in December but then shot right back up again, dropped in February, and is on its way back up again. So if I look at the end points here at 370 and the high point at 387, it is on its way back up. And give it another month or so, and I'm sure it will be right back where it was before. What does this mean for people that want to buy? Uh, this is my advice. Hop in at any time here in Florida. and Hold on to it long enough and it's going to go up in value. And that's my opinion just of what I've been seeing over the last 20, 25 years here in Florida. Uh, since I've been working real estate here, about 25 years here in Florida, I've been doing real estate for 30 years in total. Let's take a look at single family homes. And we are in the Panama City area. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, here we go. Again, peaking around August, September, coming back down and going right back up. This looks like the same thing that we were looking at earlier, right? Okay. And again here, the townhouse and condominium market was up to 480,000. In May, it dropped back down, went back up some, dropped down dramatically. Looks like it's teeter-tottering here. But if that's the case, if this is teeter-tottering, it should be on its way back up again. This could be a potential good time to buy at the low points, which I would look at in November, January, maybe May area would be a good time to buy if you're looking to buy in that area. 
So let's take a look at the Pensacola area. Pensacola, Pensacola Beach. Love that area. And we are looking at the charts. Again, you notice the pattern of the top of the market being here in June, it coming down and now going back up. This is very typical. I see this all the time. And it's almost back up to this line right here, which is great. Because if you're looking at real estate over time, this is a pretty flat chart, really. So real estate is really holding its values here. I don't know what the rest of the country is doing. And of course, as soon as I said that, we get some kind of crazy chart that bounces like there's no tomorrow. Again, my starting point is right here, June last year. And you notice it comes down September, which was that big, huge interest hike increase. It then jumps back up. I guess people didn't care that the interest rate went up. December is normally a low month anyway. It fell and so is January and then boom, jumps right back up again. So I guess the time to buy, if you're looking to buy in the Pensacola area, September, December, January might be a good time to make your purchase then. And for a townhouse or condominium. So let's take a look at some other areas. We've got Port St. Lucie here. Let's take a look at single family homes. Let's see what the Port St. Lucie area is doing. The high point again, June last year was at the top. It drops down again, January, February, and right back up again, very close to the top. Townhouses and condominium markets in Port St. Lucie. Here we go again. Here's again the, the, the peak. It peaks again in October. I guess people didn't care about the interest rate. Had a slight drop, but still above what it was this time last year. So if you were looking to buy in the Port St. Lucie area, it's always a good time to buy. Let's take a look at Sebastian Bureau Beach. We'll take a look at single family homes. And in this area here, again, peaks at June, drops in July, goes up back in August. September was the time that they announced the uh, feds raised the interest rates, uh, dropped a little bit, went back up again by January. I think there was another rate hike here, but again, look at the endpoints. We're looking at 412,000 against 405. So Florida bounces back very, very nicely um, when it comes to market values. <clears throat> here we have another chart. Of course, I'm looking at June. This is a crazy chart. So December, really flat, but look at it go up. Oh, my goodness. If I look at the endpoints here, um, this is an area that is undervalued and will probably continue to go up. I like the Vero Beach area, Sebastian area, very beautiful, very, very nice. Uh, just sold some property up there for a client and was drilled to death about um, the area. So let's take a look at Tallahassee State Capital of Florida. And we are looking at, look at this. Oh my God. So when people are saying, oh my God, the market is falling, 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 the sky is falling, uh, not here in Florida. Not here in Florida. State Capital, way up. Property values are up, and I think they're up to stay. And I know that people are dreaming that they're going to come down, but I'm not seeing it, not with these numbers. And here we are again, June, shoots back up, 
January high, February low. If you were to take that month out, um, because sometimes there's just a bad month. Uh, again, values are still holding pretty heavily there. I think the reason for this, this is, is uh, there's a major university there, go Seminoles. Um, I think that uh, it's more of a college town. Uh, and of course, Congress takes a break, state capital, uh, area and those kind of things. So that's probably why this was a dip. But other than that, it would be a pretty steady flow. Uh, times to buy, February and April. February, I, I guess, um, is when the closings happen. When you make a purchase, you're going to buy at a certain price or rate. So, and that's when school's out. So if you're looking to buy in the Tallahassee area, always think of when is school out. School starts January, that's a good time to buy. January, February, uh, to put a contract out on something. And um, April when school's out. Put it in in April and make your purchase in, in May if you're looking to get that super duper deal. Let's go to Tampa. Uh, Clearwater, St. Petersburg area. My godmother lived in this area for many, many years. Um, she loved it. And again, the top of the market, June 2022. 380 and right back up to almost where it was last year. I think in, in another month or so, we'll be seeing this, this chart going in this direction. Um, I know that there's a lot of doom and gloomers out there that are telling you that the sky is falling, but I'm not seeing it here in Florida, not at all. Let's take a look at the market here. In June last year, we were at 289 or almost 300,000. We dropped, we're above 300,000. We dropped below 300 and now we're back up to 300,000. So that's a pretty good steady uh, role in real estate maybe while the rest of the country is uh, not doing so well, Florida seems to bounce back quite, quite well. Let me take a look at the keys, Monroe County. Where's Monroe County? I want to take a look at the Florida keys. Just, there we go, Monroe County. The Florida keys, gotta love the keys. Keys are super crazy. Look at this bouncing off the charts. I guess if there's better times to buy and not so good times to buy in the Florida Keys, but most of the homes in the Florida Keys are second homes for people. And again, there was this big, huge dip. So if you bought in December or January, you did well if you bought in September. This is where the interest rates got hiked. So the interest rates went up, but people didn't care. In November, they probably decided, you know, there's not a lot of people here in November to buy um, because everybody goes back up north, celebrates with their family, and then they're back in January. And a lot of people are busy with the holidays in December. So it makes a lot of sense that December uh, was low. And so this is the market report for all of Florida. We hit all the major metropolitan areas. If you'd like to see some other areas included in here, please let me know. Let me know. I hope this helps you out. I hope this information was great and valuable to you. So um, thank you very much for watching the video. And this is Mike Thomas, Realtor, signing off.